What's up guys? This is a follow-up video to the pinpoint video that I released. Um, if you haven't already watched that, I'll link it in the top right. Uh, definitely go watch that first. Learn how to pinpoint. Hopefully it gets a buff pretty soon and uh, it'll make everything in this video even more effective. You can still use this on analog or meter or pulse, whatever you pitch on, but I still think pinpoint is probably the best way to go. Um, so, this is about pitch tunneling, right? What is pitch tunneling? Uh, it's basically a cheat code to get you through up to like 500 rating. If you can tunnel decent, you are going to strike out pretty much everybody you see at low ranks, right? Uh, you know, they might get foul balls because it being on all-star and veteran and stuff, but in general, you're going to get way more strikeouts like this. Learning to make one pitch look like the other is known as pitch tunneling. If you can tunnel in low ranks, uh, it's a cheat code, right? You're going to strike out 15 batters a game. Your opponent should not win a game where you strike him out 15 times. It's just, it's unlikely. So, who's a good uh, tunnel person? Uh, you know, we can start with Josh Hader. He's got, Josh Hader thrives off of tunneling, right? A lot of people say, oh, I don't like Josh Hader. His pitches suck. And I would counter that with, he is a tunnel god, right? He has two of the main tunnels in the game that are highly effective. Uh, you know, it looks a little better with a four seam, but the two seam still works. I liked him better last year when he still had his four seam. Uh, but without further ado, so we have our two seam fastball, right? We see what this looks like. This is why I like you guys having pitch trail on. You can see exactly what it's going to look like coming out of the hand of the pitcher. Uh, this is a very common pitch you'll see online. An up and in fastball is everybody's favorite pitch pretty much. If you can throw it accurately, it's probably the most valuable pitch in the game. We see what that looks like. All right. This looks pretty much exactly the same. A bad player is not going to pick up on the different routes. I call this the Chapman Tunnel because it's why Aroldis Chapman has been good in the game forever. You throw the high and end four seam and you break off a slider and break their bat in half or they strike out and look stupid, right? Uh, a different variation of that tunnel is something like this. You know, you sneak in the, the two seam, four seam, whatever you throw down there. You know, and they're either swinging at that or they're taking it because they are scared that it's going to be this, right? It's going to be the slider off the plate that you're not going to hit hard. You might not even hit it. I mean, that's a brush back, but with the way brush backs are this year, it's kind of crazy. So again, I mean, you see how those pi those two pitches look extremely similar. If I could overlay it, I would, right? I'll throw it a couple more times just to yeah. let you guys see what it looks like. So that's, that's a great spot for that two seam, right? And then bang. That looks exactly the same until it doesn't, right? And that's what we're trying to accomplish with pitch tunneling. That's how you're going to get more strikeouts online. Another pretty common tunnel goes off a fastball and a changeup, right? Uh, I would not throw it here unless you guys really know what you're doing. You know, that's to catch them out in front, catch them early, force weak contact. A more common variation is you hitting this fastball low and in, low and away, low and down the middle. I'm a big proponent of if you're going to throw breaking balls, throw them down the middle because people will be more tempted to swing at it. They can technically get hits this way if you find that's happening, maybe lower it a little more. But basically, that is your tunnel, right? They're going to read that it's a fastball right about there. Obviously, they want to swing at that. What we're doing is turning that into a changeup in the dirt that they will never have a chance of hitting. Right? If you guys struggle against a slider, struggle against a changeup, uh, a very beginner, you know, uh, something that beginners are bad at often is curveballs, right? Uh, it takes quite a while for, for uh, newer players to learn how to hit a curveball. And, uh, you know, you can use that against really top-end players too, right? I'm going to put that four seam right there. You know, you're not wanting to swing anymore or you're looking only for that. Throw a hook, steal a strike, looks just like the fastball. Uh, why is Musgrove a primary slider pitcher? So this fastball, right, if thrown correctly, 
is going to look a lot like this curveball. You never have a chance of hitting that curveball. If you swing at that curveball, you're going to strike out. It got hung a little bit right there, but in general, you're not going to, right? Musgrove's a good tunneler. Uh, you know, you can steal strikes with this outside four seam. Bang, they take that strike one. Strike two, I'm going to try to tunnel the slider, right? And that's kind of how sequencing works, right? Sequencing can take precedence over tunneling, or tunneling can take precedence over sequencing, or they can work together like that, right? So if I just threw a 95 mile an hour sinker on the inside, I probably do not want to throw a 92 mile an hour cutter there, right? Because if they swing for the sinker again, that's going to be an early home run probably, right? So it's important to sequence. A uh, traditional sequence is fastball, off-speed fastball, or some variation on that. Uh, typically, you don't get too predictable with that. But typically, it's not a good idea to ever throw the same pitch multiple times in a row unless you know what you're doing. Uh, it's always important to pitch with a purpose, really have something in mind. For me personally, at the very top end levels of the game, every pitch has a purpose. Every pitch is meant to set someone up for something else, right? If I'm throwing this four seam, it's to set up the, the tunnel with the slider. You know, if they swing at the slider, great. It's an 0-2 count. If they don't, you know, it sets his eyes up low and away. That's the last place he was looking. Sets me up for this high and end four seam, high and end sinker, whatever I want. Let's say I steal a strike with that. Now it's a 1-2 count. He's got a ball. He's got two strikes. He's overly protective. You know, I tunnel this, right? Looks like the four seam. Breaks way inside. Jams him. He's going to have to really get around on that. And that's how I would work in that bat, right? Another example, uh, you know, maybe I steal an outside strike with a four seam. Bang, we're up a one on the hitter. He's looking for something he can do some damage with. Outside cutter, right? Bang, he's an O2 count. He's in an awful spot now. He really has to protect the plate. He's got to be really selective with what he wants to swing at, and he can't afford to take a pitch like this. He cannot afford to take that. He's going to have to swing at it if we put it in the right spot. And that's kind of how tunneling works. That's kind of how sequencing works. Uh, really just, again, that's why I preach hitting and pitching from strike zone so you can get a better feel for how a pitch looks, how it breaks, how it reacts, coming out the hand. Uh, it'll help you learn tunnels, you know. At the lower ranks, I doubt people are going to really tunnel you, at least on purpose. But uh, it's very important to learn how to how to do tunneling, right? If you ever want to get really good at the game, tunneling is pretty much one of the only ways to get good hitters out, right? I'm sure you guys have played a BR game or an event game, or maybe you've gotten unlucky enough to match with a really good player in ranked on all-star or veteran difficulty. Uh, you're not getting them out, right? They're sitting there, they're hitting perfect perfects over and over again on you, and you don't know what's happening, and you're like, man, I really suck at this game. It's probably because you're not tunneling, right? For a really good player on All-Star and Veteran, that's just too easy. They have too much time to decide what pitch it is, where their PCI needs to be, when they need this wing. Uh, you know, after you're used to playing on Hall of Fame and Legend so much, All-Star is really easy. Uh, it feels like you have forever to hit the ball. Even though, to you guys, it might not feel like that. To top-end players, it feels like that. So, it's really important to tunnel and at least have a chance of fooling them. Right, it's probably the only way you're going to do weak contact. Other than that, you're just waiting for them to line out three times, uh, which is not how you want to be playing the game. Right, uh, certain pitchers are good at inducing weak contact, like Fergie Jenkins, for example, this year. Uh, other pitchers like Roki are more strikeout focused. Uh, you know, you can use a tunnel not to strike out hitters. Right, you can use a tunnel to force weak contact to make them be early, to make them be late. And, uh, yeah, guys, that's pitch tunneling. Uh, experiment with some. There's some more advanced tunnels like cutter and sinker that you guys should probably put some time and effort into learning. Uh, it's not that hard, you know, get in custom practice, experiment with things, see what looks like what. And, uh, yeah, guys, if this was helpful at all, feel free to like and subscribe. Peace.